Congratulations. My story begins in March 18, 2003, when I was born in the Holy Crescent Hospital in Chittagong, Bangladesh. A few years later, I would arrive in America, where I would enroll in PS86, then MS-118, and after countless nights of studying at the Bobes Library with my dad at NYU, I would get accepted at Brooklyn Technical High School, the largest specialized high school in all of America. Let's see what happened. I was born on March 18, 2003 in the Holy Crescent Hospital in Chittagong, Bangladesh. My first school was Child Haven in Bangladesh where I attended pre-K. And then came February 9, 2009. Our plane had traveled more than 8,000 miles across the Atlantic and finally touched down on JFK International Airport. I was now in America. After I landed in America, I enrolled in PS86 and spent five years from first grade to sixth grade and met many of my favorite teachers including Ms. Peranek, Ms. Gittleman, Mr. Shaw, and many more. After PS86 came MS-118, the best middle school in the Bronx and where I spent two years, seventh grade and eighth grade, and where I had the privilege of being taught by some amazing teachers including Ms. Robertson, Mr. Aki, Ms. Crisioni, Ms. Sickles, and many more. Yes, I'm in 7th grade and I'm 13. I'm currently going to MS-118, a uh, middle school in the Bronx. But in my final year at MS-118 in 8th grade came perhaps the most important exam in my life thus far. And that was the SHSAT, which would determine whether I could get into one of the specialized high schools. And so I spent months prepping in the Bose Library with my dad at NYU. I was going crazy to get into Brooklyn Tech and preparing for the SHSAT. I solved every single math problem in every single SHSAT practice book I could find. I did every single practice exam and answered every single essay prompt. And now, all I needed was a little bit of luck. And lo and behold, would you believe it? On March 8, 2017, just 10 days before my 14th birthday, I received the acceptance letter to Brooklyn Tech. And God knows I accepted. The next four years would be some of the most eventful of my entire life. Over the course of those four years, I would become captain of the math team, executive editor of the student newspaper, representative of the chess team, author of 55 Days in Derby, founder of Math for Bronze. I would publish articles in national newspapers and author three scientific manuscripts, one with my lifelong mentor, Dr. Daniel Kabat. I would become the first and only winner from Brooklyn Tech of the New York City and Brooklyn Hackathon, all while maintaining a 98.9% cumulative four-year average while taking seven AP courses and scoring 1560 on the SAT, 790 in the math section and 770 in the reading section and scoring 35 on the ACT. What you've just seen is 18 years of my life condensed into less than four minutes. Now I want to shed some light onto what my dreams were when I entered Brooklyn Tech and what my goals were when I left. My first dream was to publish a book on something I was deeply passionate about, poverty alleviation. And so that's exactly what I did in 2020. I went into the Darby slum of Mumbai, the largest slum in all of India, and I interviewed the slum dollars about their hopes, their dreams, their accomplishments. And I wrote 55 Days in Darby based on those interviews. My lifelong mentor, Dr. Catherine Mill, chair of the NYU Education Department, wrote the introduction for the book, which I'm very thankful for. And so that's why I consider my first goal accomplished. My second goal was to publish an article in a national newspaper. Now, God knows I've tried this many, many times over the course of my four years at Brooklyn Tech. I sent articles to every newspaper on the blog, the Washington Post, the Washington Examiner, the New York Times, but rejection after rejection made me think that I was never gonna achieve that dream. Until finally, after many trials and tribulations, I achieved it in my senior year of high school when I published an article on the pitfalls of remote learning in the Washington Examiner. This paper read by many influential politicians and academic leaders. And so that's why I consider my second dream accomplished. My third dream was to publish research. Now this one goes back four years. This one has taken so long. And as they say, third time's the charm. And that's exactly it is what it was in this case. My first manuscript 
the viability of electric big rigs was such a massive failure, nobody knows I ever wrote it. it it's a shame. Um, so I worked a few months on it and it's basically discussing how successful electric trucks can be using a mathematical bus, bus model and a Voronoi model. The article was rejected from every journal and every publication and even rejected from every competition. So it was a big time failure and you're seeing that right now on the screen. My second manuscript was A Bridge from Maxwell to Einstein, which I wrote under the supervision of my lifelong mentor, Dr. Daniel Kabat, MIT physicist and Lehman College professor. When I was just 10 years old, my dad would take me to his modern physics class at Lehman College, taught by none other than Dr. Kabat. And since then, I was hooked. In fact, I went into Dr. Kabat's office, and guess what? I wrote down Maxwell's equations in his office, which I had obviously memorized. But almost a decade later, I would collaborate with Dr. Kabat on the very same equations to create simulations, computational visualizations in Python to help other students understand Maxwell's equations using interactive and playful simulations. And that's what my second manuscript was about. What you're seeing right here is the simulation for the Biosavar law. And then you're gonna see a simulation of the Lorentz transformations. So the goal of the paper is to show the relationship between electromagnetism and special relativity. The same relationship that Einstein was inspired by when he wrote the electrodynamics of moving bodies. And Dr. Kabat graciously helped me through the process of learning uh, and answering all the questions I had when I was self-teaching myself uh, vector calculus and linear algebra. He commented on the effectiveness of my simulations. He told me how I should structure my, my paper and he gave me advice on how I should respond to the reviewer's comments. So I'm very grateful to Dr. Kabat for that. So thank you, Dr. Kabat. And I submitted my second manuscript to many publications, but once again, it was rejected from everywhere. But it did manage to become a semi-finalist at the New York City Science Symposium at York College. And my third manuscript I wrote in the senior year of my high school, teaching the action principle in optics. So how did that come to be? Well, after I learned about the concept of curvature from my multivariable calculus class at Brooklyn Tech, and I attended a conference on how light bends in different ways of surfaces in positive curvature, negative curvature, and zero curvature, I suddenly became inspired about, by the principle of least action, a principle which seems to describe almost every phenomena we see in the natural world, from special relativity, following the world line of, of, least, uh, of maximal aging, quantum mechanics, following every single path, and so I was so inspired by this principle, I thought it was worthy of a paper. And that's why I wrote Teaching the Action Principle in Optics. And so I'm happy to announce that that paper has recently been published in Cornell and Harvard's preprint servers and is pending review in the Associ American Association of Physics Teachers Journal. And that's why I consider the third goal accomplished. My fourth goal was to become a researcher in a lab. And God knows, I've been waiting four years for that to happen. But finally, after I graduated from Brooklyn, Brooklyn Tech, after four years, I received an acceptance from the Morales Lab at the City College of New York, where I'm now working alongside other physics postdocs and physics professors to create artificial neural networks to help the lab classify experimental data. Eventually, our dream is that we can use these AI models to control how atoms spin. And why is that important? Well, now we use bits and bytes to transmit information. But the hope is one day we can use light and photons and excitons to transmit information between two, two sources. And so that's why every day I work in the lab, I consider it a privilege to work along these amazing people and to learn from these amazing scientists. And that's why I consider my fourth dream accomplished. Now my fifth and sixth dreams to get into Harvard and to win the Nobel Prize in Physics, to make groundbreaking contributions in the subject I love so much, those I have not accomplished yet. But that doesn't mean I'm gonna stop trying. In fact, it means I'm gonna work even harder because I know how hard it is to accomplish them. So, I want you to wait. You just wait. Four years after I finish my bachelor's in physics from the City College of New York, and you just wait and see where I am. I'll be at the Harvard Crimson. All right, folks, so now let's see what my teachers have to say. Congratulations, Rafa, on graduating from Brooklyn Tech. I've watched your growth and progress for many years now. It's wonderful to see you reach this milestone. It's been a real pleasure working with you during the time you've been conducting research on Maxwell's equations in physics education. I wish you all the best on the next steps in your educational journey. 
Congratulations again. This is Mr. Verzi, he's the best English teacher. Uh, he read all my essays, he gave so much feedback on them. Uh, so thanks for Mr. Verzi for, uh, for proofing everything. Hey guys, this is uh, Mr. Lopez. He's, uh, he was my test team advisor and he uh, teaches engineering here at Tech. Uh, so it was amazing knowing you, Mr. Lopez. Learned a lot. All right. Good luck. Thank you. Uh, this is Mr. Correo. He's the lab instructor at Brooklyn Tech. He's been uh, my awesome uh, guy next to me for the last four years. Uh, so it's great to have known him. Likewise. Thank go, you. Good luck next year. Thank you, Mr. Correo. Bye-bye. Right. Mr. Matthews. He's the uh, math teacher who nominated me for the Western Scholarship. So uh, thank you, Mr. Matthews. You're welcome. And congratulations and good luck to you. Thank you. This is Mr. Kim. He was my freshman uh, Spanish teacher. Uh, he was an awesome guy and uh, it was awesome knowing him. Thank you very much for that. Thank Good you. luck, okay? Thank you. Okay. This is Ms. Berry. Oh, that's nice, thank you. Uh, thank you. Yeah. This is Rifa. Um, he's a fantastic <laughs> student, and I've learned so much from him and really enjoyed teaching him. Why are we going out for him? Hi, Ms. Berry. Thank you. Oh, we're going to high. That's Principal Newman, everyone. Today we're going to discuss the principle of least action, which is one of the... I want to end the video by thanking my entire family, without whom this would not have been possible. My dad, my mom, my little brother, my tatu, my tatumoni, my dada, my dadu, my nanu, everyone. I want to thank them for investing and supporting and doing so much for me over the last 18 years. And so, let me show you what they have to say. <laughs> Today is my graduation from Brooklyn Tech uh, and uh, this is my Chatsu, he came here all the way from the Bronx uh, to Brooklyn to support me and uh, for my graduation uh, he survived all four hours and uh, he clapped for me when I was on the stage, he supported me for the last four years uh, and for the last 18 years uh, he's been there by my side uh, as well as my Chatsu Moni who is not on camera but uh, congratulations. congratulations. Uh, congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations, Apurva. Thank you. So, this is my Nano and this is my Kalamuni. Uh, they've supported me for the last 18 years and now they are seeing me graduate from Brooklyn Tech. Folks, that's four years and four minutes. That's all of my Brooklyn Tech history. <laughs>